Hello everyone and welcome to this service today. I'm looking forward to sharing this message with you, a message of thanksgiving. I pray that this week will be a blessing to you and your family and hope that you're able to come together around the table and to give thanks and praise for all that God has done. And so it's just a wonderful time of the year as we uh, enter into Thanksgiving and start preparing our church as well for the Advent season. I want to remind you that Tuesday night uh, we'll be having ecumenical service with Little Flower Catholic Church here at our church. It's our 50th uh, annual ecumenical celebration. 50 years together we've been gathering uh, with uh, Little Flower Catholic Church and what a blessing that that's been. That service starts at 7 o'clock I want to invite you to come. I also want to thank Isaac for preaching last Sunday. I was not able uh, to, after a post-surgery uh, to uh, stand for a period of time, and I'm so grateful that he uh, shared the Word of God and did a great job of Psalm 23, and I just wanted to thank him as well. Uh, continue to pray for me. I'm a little past two weeks. This Tuesday of next week will be two weeks post-surgery. All the information the doctors has given me, it said it could take anywhere from three to six weeks to start feeling normal again. And I don't know exactly what normal for me means, but uh, uh, hopefully uh, it's better the way that I felt in the last couple of weeks. But I do appreciate your thoughts, your prayers, your texts, your emails, your cards, uh, especially again, your prayers. Uh, well, let us go to the Lord in prayers. We begin this uh, time together, let us pray. God of all blessings and source of all life, giver of all grace and in all things, I want to thank you for the gift of life, for the bread that sustains life, and for the food of this earth that nurtures life, for the love of family and friends without which there would be little happiness in life. I thank you for the beauty of creation of this great earth, for the joy that the ear may hear, for the unknown that we cannot behold, filling the universe with wonder, and for the expanse of space that draws us beyond the definitions of ourselves. Anything in my life and the life that surrounds me was drawn and created by your hand, O oh God, and for this we are all thankful. We pray this prayer in the name of Christ. Amen and amen. As I said uh, earlier, this is the season of Thanksgiving. And I was thinking about that. I hope that Thanksgiving is not just a season for the church, but I would pray that Thanksgiving is a lifestyle. And I know that the Bible encourages us to live a lifestyle of thanks and praise. What if thanks and praise, a life of Thanksgiving, became such a part of our everyday life that we would live our entire life as a thank you note to God. Think about that. What if we lived every day in thanksgiving and praise to God and a, in a sense of gratitude to the Lord so that our entire life would be given back to God as a thank you note? Now think about this for a second. I, 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 I didn't say that, I didn't come up with it, but I've heard it many times and it is this. Your life is God's gift to you. What you do with it is your gift to God. Let me say that again. Your life is God's gift to you. What you do with that life is your gift back to God. So I think that's important. I would like to suggest that one thing we can do with our lives is not just to celebrate Thanksgiving as a season, but to adopt Thanksgiving as a lifestyle. And again, you've heard the term, I, I didn't come up with it, but I love it. It's learning to develop an attitude of gratitude. And I promise that if you give back to God this kind of lifestyle, I do promise that it will increase your happiness, it will increase your satisfaction in life, and it will make your life more meaningful and more significant. And let me show you why. You see, the sacrifice that honors the Lord is a thankful heart, Psalm 50 and verse 23. See, God wants us to live out a, a lively faith, a life of faith that exemplifies a life that, it, that is expressed and characterized by having a life 
or a heart that has an attitude of gratitude. That's the thankful heart. So Psalms 50 and 23, the sacrifices that honor the Lord is a thankful heart. You see, expressing gratitude can improve your mood. Did you know that? People who regularly express uh, uh, gratitude for the positive things in their life are shown to have a happier overall sense of being at, with lowering rates of stress and depression. Showing gratitude can also make us optimistic and not pessimistic. Showing gratitude has the following mental health uh, benefits as well. Now, I, I read the other day, according to psychological, psychology today, there are seven scientific uh, proven benefits. And I wanted to share those with you because I just think they're important. Number one, gratitude opens the door to more relationships. Isn't that interesting? You see, the more you live a life of gratitude and you have an attitude of gratitude, it opens up more relationships because people want to be around positive people. People want to be around other people who help them see the good in life. Gratitude improves physical health. I think we do that. Great, uh, grateful people experience fewer aches and pains according to this report, not according to Riley. They report feeling healthier than other people who, are, who don't express gratitude. And according to this study done in 2012, it, not surprisingly, but grateful people are, are also more likely to take care of their overall health. They exercise more, and they're more likely to attend regular checkups, which is likely to, con to contribute to having, uh, living longer in life and more healthier in life. So gratitude opens the door to more relationships and improves our physical health, but it also improves our psychological health. You see, gratitude reduces a multitude of toxic emotions from envy and resentment and frustration and even regret. Gratitude enhances empathy and reduces aggression. Uh, this study showed that participants who ranked higher on the gratitude scale were less likely to retaliate against others even when given negative feedback. They experienced more sensitiv sensitivity and empathy towards other people and a decreased desire to seek revenge. Number five, grateful, grateful people sleep better. Now, writing in a gratitude journal improves sleep, and according to this study published by Applied Psychology, Health and Well-Being, Studies show that they, if we spend just 15 minutes jotting down a few grateful sentiments before we go to bed, that, you'll sleep, that you will sleep better and you'll sleep longer. I would just simply say, just have a time of praying and thanking God for all that God has done for you in your life and even in that day. Number six, gratitude improves self-esteem. Studies have shown that gratitude reduces social Comparisons, rather than becoming resentful towards people who may have more money or a better job, a major factor in reducing self-esteem. Here, grateful people are able to appreciate other people's accomplishments. And number seven, gratitude increases mental strength. For years, research has shown that gratitude not only reduces stress, uh, but also may play a major role in overcoming trauma that we experience in life. They did a study in 2006, and the Journey of Personality and Social Psychology found that gratitude was a major factor or contributor to resilience following the terrorist attacks in 9-11. Recognizing all that you have to be thankful for, even during the worst times, this report said, fosters resilience. So far, the remainder of our time together, I want to try to answer the question, this question, why should our life be a thank you note to God? And why should I give back to God an attitude of gratitude? I think that's a good place to start. I'm going to give us a couple of reasons uh, why, and then uh, also give us an opportunity to participate in a few expressions of gratitude. So write this down. The first reason I should live my entire life as a thank you note back to God is because of who 
God is. Because of who God is. You see, if God was mean-spirited, if he was unfaithful to us, if God was untrustworthy, then we would have no reason to be grateful. We would have no reason to even show gratitude whatsoever. But God is none of these things, and the Bible teaches us that God is the complete opposite of those things. So let's take just a few moments, and let's just share a few things of who God is. Who is God? Well, Psalm 145 and 3 says that the Lord is great. So we know that God is great, right? The, the scripture says that he is worthy of our praise. No one can understand how great God is. So why should that be a source of gratitude? Well, God is great. He created the heavens and the earth. He hung the universe and the stars and the moon and all the planets in space. If God can do all of those things, then God can take care of my problems here on earth. You see, God is great. Who is God? Well, God is holy. In Psalms 97 and verse 12, it says, Give thanks to God as you remember how holy God is. Now, what does that mean? Well, holy means God is pure and God is perfect. You see, without God's purity and per perfection in this universe, only evil would exist. So I'm glad that God, thank God, I, I praise him, that God is holy in all things. Who is God? God is great and God is holy. And then God is love. In Psalms 107 verse 8, it says, Give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love. And I'm so glad of that, aren't you? God's love never fails. Listen, no man and no woman will ever be able to love you the way that God loves you. And I know that we seek for love in, in other people, and that's a good thing. I love my wife of all my heart, and I know that she loves me, but I know that I play second fiddle in the love in this love relationship because and for Angie and for me, God is our first love. And so the only reason there's really love in the universe is that God is love. That's his nature. First John says that God is love and whoever is born of God is born in that love. So who is God? Well, God is great, God is holy, and God is love. The next thing is we understand in scripture and in the Psalms that God is just. Psalm seven and verse 17 says, I will thank the Lord because he is just. That means that you can always count on God to do the right thing, that he'll never do the wrong thing. And I can give him thanks for that. Regardless of whatever happens in my life, I believe in that passage of scripture, Romans 8 and 28, that God works to good for all of those who love him and who are called according to that purpose. And so I believe that with all of my heart that God is just, uh, and I want to thank the Lord for all that he has done in my life. So who is God? Well, God is great, God is holy, God is love, and God is good. The next in Psalm 54 and 6 says that God, of course, is good. I want to thank the Lord because he is good. You see, everything in your life, everything in your life that is good comes from a good God. I like that saying, we do that a lot here at Myrtle Grove. I'll say, God is good. And the people will say, all the time. And I'll say, all the time. And the people will say, what? God is good. Amen. James in chapter 1 verse 17 says that every good and perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. Every good and perfect gift is from God above. Well, I remember the many years that Angie and I went, or we both went through infertility, and she went through it a whole lot worse than I did. But, but the day that uh, Isaac, our child, after six years of, uh, of seeking God and, and a lot of surgeries, uh, God was faithful and, and uh, Isaac was born. One of our church members made us a sign that we hung up in, in the hospital room there. Uh, and it said, and it had this passage of scripture that every good and perfect gift comes 
down from the Father uh, of heavenly lights. And I remember that to this day. Who is God? God is great. God is holy. God is love. God is just. And God is good. And we also know that God is kind and God is merciful. In Psalms 118 and verse 1, it says, Tell the Lord how thankful you are because God is always kind and God is always merciful. I love that. You know, in life, I'm not always kind and merciful to people around me. And people aren't always kind and merciful to me as well. That's part of the human dilemma that we live in because we live in a fallen, sinful world. And we, we're born into this world broken. It is only by the grace of God working in our lives, trying to make us more like Jesus so that we can become kind and merciful. But God is always kind and merciful. We should give thanks to the Lord for that. So who is, who is God? God is great. God is holy. God is love. God is just. God is good. And God is kind and merciful. And I have one more. God is forgiving. Aren't you glad of that? In Psalms 103 and 8 through 12, it reads, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. The Lord does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. Aren't you glad of that? For high as the heavens are above the earth, as far as the east is from the west, God has removed our transgressions and our sins and has forgiven us of our sin. Now I love that. God has forgiven us. Oh, I'm so glad that when I, that day that I called upon the name of the Lord uh, there in that parsonage in Mount Vernon, Alabama, when I called upon the name of the Lord and I said, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I've sinned against heaven. I've sinned against you. I've sinned against my family. And I pray for forgiveness. And the Holy Spirit came into my life like a flood. And I felt like what other evangelists is called like liquid love being poured out in my body. And at that moment, that moment, I knew that my sin had been forgiven by the grace of God. So who is God? Well, God is great. God is holy. God is love. God is just. God is good. God is kind and merciful. And God is forgiving. So the first reason I should live my entire life as a thank you note back to God is because of who God is. And all those things that I just shared just begin to scratch the surface of who God is. So the second reason I should live my entire life as a thank you note to God is, is we had just said because of who God is, but also because of what God has done. Now I want you to think about this. The difference of who God is and what God has done is the difference between praise and thanksgiving. You see, we praise God for who God is and we thank God for what God has done. What has God done? Now hold, uh, hold on just a minute. I, I'm going to give us about 33 reasons. Are you ready? I'll try and get through them real fast. Well, we're a part of the eternal plan of God because God created us in his image. God created us in his image for the purpose of having a living relationship. He has redeemed us. He has reconciled us in Christ to a holy God. We have that living relationship in God. We are forgiven, as I said earlier, of all of our sins. We are placed in Christ. We are free from the law. We are a child of God. We are adopted in God. We are acceptable to God. We are justified. We're brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. We're delivered out of the power of darkness. We have an entrance into a new kingdom, the kingdom of light. We're made to stand on the rock of Jesus Christ. We are a gift from God the Father to Christ. We are circumcised in Christ. We are partakers of the royal and holy priesthood. We are a chosen generation, a holy nation. We are a particular people. We have heavenly citizenship of the family and household of God and in the fellowship of the saints. 
We have our heavenly associations and we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ of all that heaven offers. We have access to God through the Holy Spirit. Within the much more care of God, we receive grace and mercy. Grace is our inheritance. We have an inheritance in the saints that the scripture says that will never spoil or fade. We are in the kingdom of light in the Lord. We are united through the Holy Spirit with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We are blessed with the earnest of the first fruits of the Spirit, which means that we are spirit filled. We're born of the Spirit. We are baptized by the Spirit. We are indwelled and anointed by the Holy Spirit. We are filled by the Holy Spirit, and we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. We are glorified in the kingdom, that is a, a promised kingdom of glory. We are complete in Christ. The scripture says that in him the fullness of Godhead dwells bodily. <clears throat> we are complete in Christ. And then in Ephesians 1, we possess, <coughs> excuse me, every spiritual blessing what has God done for us well if you had another hour or two I might could explain it to you but now maybe you can begin to see why the psalmist tells us in Psalm 52 and verse 9 I will thank you God forever for what you have done so how do I show gratitude to a God for who he is and what he has done now there are a million answers to that question in our time together, I just want to give you two. First of all, we can thank God through prayer. We can thank God through prayer for who he is. We can thank God because he is loving. He is kind and merciful. He is just. He is great. He is good. He is forgiven. And we can just begin to just, and in and, and prayer in Psalms 105 and 1 says, Give thanks to the Lord and pray to him. And so I want to encourage you uh, in the next few days to sit down with pad and pencil or pen and write out those things that you are grateful for, for what God has done for you, for who God is in your life and what God has done for you. And take some time and begin to pray and thank God for those gifts. I have a prayer of gratitude that I'd like to pray for us right now. Would you go to the Lord with prayer with me, in prayer with me? Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your amazing power and work in our lives. Thank you for the goodness and for the blessings that you pour over us. Thank you that you are able to bring hope through even the most difficult times, strengthening us, the body of Christ, for your purpose. Thank you for your great love and care. Thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you that you are always with us and we are never alone. Thank you for your incredible sacrifice so that we may have freedom in life. Forgive us where we don't thank you enough for who you are and for all that you do and all that you have given to us. Help us set our eyes and our hearts on you afresh and anew. Renew our spirits. Fill us with your peace and joy. We love you and we need you this day and every day. We give you praise, we give you thanks, for you alone are worthy. In the name of Christ, amen and amen. You see, I can show God gratitude by thanking God in prayer. And secondly, I can show gratitude by singing with all of my heart. You see, singing with all of your heart is a way to express thanksgiving. That even if you can't hold a note, and I'm not the best in the world, but you can make a joyful noise. Amen. The scriptures tells us that. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Psalms 147 says, Sing out your things to the Lord. Sing praises to our God. As I said before, there are many ways to show gratitude. And, and one of those ways is just to sing unto the Lord with all of your heart. And I would encourage you to cut on some Christian music, maybe some hymns or praise music, whatever you like to listen to in your home or while you're driving, and just sing unto the Lord. Give thanks unto the Lord. Make that a time of a thanksgiving and offering of praise unto him. In our worship service, when I preach this message, 
We're going to take time as a congregation here to sing a few hymns just so that we, under, we can have that feeling of knowing that uh, we're singing praise unto the Lord, you know. I, I love that with all of my heart. Uh, sing with all of your heart is a way to express thanksgiving. Now, there are many ways to show gratitude, but I want to give you one more before I leave uh, you today. Live a life of gratitude. Live a life of gratitude. The Apostle Paul says that in all things give thanks for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, give back to God a life of prayer, a life of praise, and a life of service. And if you do that, I know that you'll be blessed, you'll be more happier, you'll be more satisfied, your family will be more happier and satisfied, and I know your friends who that circle of influence around you, they'll be more happy and satisfied as well. And above all, God will be honored and God will be glorified. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving day. May the Lord bless you. Take time in the next couple of days to give your life back to the Lord as a thank you note. Show your appreciation and gratitude for who God is and for what God has done. Pray and give thanks and praise. Sing and live a life before others that others might see your good works and glorify the Father who is in heaven. God bless you. Amen and amen.